and welcome to the J Train Podcast. J Train, Jared Freed, coming to you live from the quarantine cabin on the Lower East Side of Manhattan. We are here Monday and Thursday. That's right. We switched the days. Get it in the calendar. Monday, J Train. Tuesday, Luxury Lounge on Patreon. Wednesday, You Up Podcast. Thursday, J Train Podcast. Friday, one more email on Patreon. Sunday, Coffee with J Train on Patreon. So there's your week. That's your hot cup of J Train. That's the Wizard of Haas in your ear. Six days a week. You're welcome. Take and, and again, this a podcast is for you to take your brain out and put it on the shelf and let your buddy, the board lord, take the wheel. That's what we do. And if you're not on Patreon, get the fuck on there. Patreon is I, I'm loving what's happening there because we're creating a community. Not not really, but you know. You know what I mean? I, I'm very in touch with the Patreon members. I answer every single comment on there. Um, and I'm putting out three additional podcasts a week that are kind of mini-sodes. $5 a month. $5 a month. That's all I'll say about it. Patreon.com slash Jared Freed. Get involved. Keep sharing this podcast. Keep getting involved here. We have amazing emails. I'm very excited about today's guest. New to the show, but not new to me. Uh, I'm very excited to have him on here. Hilarious comic, Gordon Baker Bone. Thank you for coming on. Hey, what up, man? Hey, everybody. It's good this to is... see you, buddy. Oh, dude, it's good to see you, man. You got a nice setup. I've been saying this setup for a while. It's nice. It's. I got, got a, a nice, nice thing going on. Well, this is what happens when... I moved in with my girlfriend, and then okay. all of a sudden things get hung on the wall. You know, all of a sudden <laughs> I have a plant behind me. You know, that changes things a little bit. Dude, I am trying to decor my own place. I don't know how to do it. It is uh, – I, I need to take a course. I need something. It, it is – do you live alone? Who do you live with? Anybody? I, I live with my best friend right now. Uh, my, me and my best friend moved in with each other. So it's just uh, the two of us for right now. So uh, his girlfriend comes in and out. But, yeah, you know, I'm I just, mean, uh, I, I'm sorry. What'd you say? Nah, just like I'm trying to get to that point where I'm just like, I get I get my own place. And I know how to decorate my own place. I think I need Dude, a good. The woman's touch thing is just. Under I I've never lived with a woman. I yeah. um there are things that that we have here that like and like she wants this place to be livable in a way that I don't care about. <laughs> it is like unbelievable to like 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 the idea of coasters to me <laughs> was like what a coaster. Get the fuck out of here. Now I got I'm getting new coasters. I got one in front of me here. I I, I it, it is there's a there's a sense of care that she has that I like I and then sometimes she'll be like we got to hang the painting. I'll be like do you I don't know how to do that. I'll, I will and I'm always I'm like a we'll do it next week guy. Yeah. Push it along, push it down the road. Like I'm learning how to do some home care. I, I went to Home Goods for the first time before the pandemic. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you've ever been to Home Goods. It is a no. beautiful place. I, I I need Home Goods in my life. <laughs> really? And it's so do oh, dude. I used to make fun of people that like candles, and then I smelled uh, a winter's candle, and I was like, I need this. <laughs> this is a, I need these are these are the conversations that you start to have with these are like getting older. Con I feel like we met like I I was probably twenty seven. How old are you yeah. now? Uh, right now I am thirty five, bro. So we're the same age. Yeah. We're 27 or 26 <laughs> meeting a while back. And it's like we were probably talking about how much you know vodka sodas we could drink. And now we're like, yeah. you got to go to Hol Home Goods. <laughs> Have you been to Home Goods? <laughs> you got to get in there. I don't like I've never seen anything like I, I used to be so nervous. Like once I got my place, I was like, all right. Uh, like I got my own place after like a breakup. And I was like, all right, cool. I got to. She took everything, and I was like, "Oh man, I'm used to certain things." She took the duvet, yeah. and I didn't even know what a duvet was. And I was like, "What is? <laughs> Why is this blanket white now?" <laughs> yeah, that. I mean, that's the thing. She took everything because everything was hers. It was her home that yeah. she put together. <laughs> yep, well, and I, I had to learn I, how to put it back together. 
Well, I'm so pumped to have you here, Gordon. I'm, I'm, I'm embarrassed because you should have came on earlier. I don't know how we didn't make this happen. Um, but everyone needs to go follow Gordon on Instagram and Twitter, at Baker Bone, mm-hmm. at Baker Bone. And he has an album out right now that you can listen to. And, and I do this album speech every now and again for different yeah. guests that we have. I have an album out there. Gordon has a has an album out there. It's called Nobody Just Me. And yep. anywhere you're listening to music, you can hear Gordon Baker Bones album and he's fantastically funny and he's hilarious. You're going to love it. But I I think for everyone out there if you're like, "Well, when do I listen to a comedy podcast?" Again, what I said in the beginning, take your brain, put it on the shelf. You're at Gordon Baker Bones show. <laughs> you close your eyes. You can hear the wait staff. You can hear the the microphone. That you're you you can imagine yourself in the room with him, and you can hear the audience laughing. It's a fun experience. Where did you tape the album? I taped the album at uh, a home club uh, slash like bar that my friend owned. I performed there all the time, mm-hmm. and I decided to go back there and kind of finish all the jokes that I wrote there there like i wanted to just dump them out one last time and i mm. went to that bar and i recorded it out in uh jersey and uh it was pretty dope it was a whole bunch of new people that never heard me before and like a few friends in the back and uh it was a dope crazy experience because uh it, it's something i'm always gonna hold near and dear to my heart because like it, where i recorded it so it, it's like a friend's bar yeah uh 10th See, street live yeah and and so where in new jersey is is the bar uh, it was in Kenworth, New Jersey. Uh, it's on, like on a little side street. You never would guess this bar was there. It used to be called Apples, and then it turned to this place called uh, Temp Street Live, and my friend owned it. He was managing it. He asked me to help out from time to time, run a mm-hmm. show here and there to get like a crowd in there, and it was very successful for a very long time until I moved see, on and started doing shows in the city. See, that's the thing where people – that li- this isn't a comedy podcast. Like we don't talk yeah. comedy shop, but in the beginning when I bring someone on, a friend, a good comic, what yeah. people might not understand is like there are these shows – that exist in like cool spaces that like sometimes they don't work. Sometimes you're like, who would ever put a show here? No one's going to show up. And then when they do work, they almost become like a community. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and it's, it's, I never would have thought it. Like I, I saw it with, uh, broken comedy, like Che and Nimesh and Denny's show. Like any people, would come back because they knew like they knew the people putting it together. They knew the people on the lineup would be kind of like, um, like get like uh, they would be types of comics. They would enjoy like it. The show almost becomes the best recommendation for everyone that comes on the show. Yeah. Like the show was uh, at such a weird time. It was on uh, Mondays uh, at nine o'clock when you think when no one would show up and mm-hmm. just on a random night, you would have 50 to 70 people just show up for a show in Kenilworth, New Jersey for no reason. They know they have work tomorrow and they and, still came and, out. And it's such an amazing feeling. You're like, and, and they do like, I, I guess like what's funny to us is sometimes, I don't know if you have this feeling like as a comic, there are nights where I go, what the fuck are these people doing here? Yeah. <laughs> you know? And and but then you start to like you're like, wow, like I see I have now become friendly with people that just go to a lot of shows at yeah. these types of venues. And it's like yeah. it's very cool. It it is it does make you realize that comedy is a community and there's people that are a part of it no matter whether they do it or don't. Oh, for sure, bro. And that's what that's the one cool thing about it, because like I was planning on doing my my first album inside like a comedy club in the city and I planned it out. And then my friend was like, Hey, why don't you just do it here? Cause we really would like to see it. And I was like, hey, let's do it. And then it becomes like a, like a, like a time piece. It, it becomes yeah. like a, a, a great memory. That's really cool. I want yeah. everyone to go listen to the album. If you Spotify, Apple music, anywhere uh-huh. you listen to music, you search Gordon Baker mm-hmm. bone and I'll His right albums up. are going to. You have multiple. Out. You have a couple, don't no, you? I, my second one is coming out. Uh, that, those are my first one. My second one. Okay. It was recorded and it's going to be out soon. So this one, it's called "Nobody Just Me." Gordon Baker yep. Bone. Go search it out and let me 
reiterate, I say this all the time, and I hope people hear this. <laughs> you pressing play on Gordon Baker Bones' album is a form of payment. You people, Comics love when you play their album because we have all set it up so we can get paid. It, and we want you to become a fan. We want you to come to a show. But even the small gesture of pressing play on the album is is an amazing thing that goes a long way for us that doesn't take a lot out of you. So go check it out. Gordon Baker Bone, Nobody Just Me, at Baker Bone on all all platforms. Are you ready to do some emails? Heck yeah, let's do it. Let's get to it. Let's do it. JTrainPodcast at gmail.com. JTrainPodcast at gmail.com. Does my friends with benefits want more? J Train, love the podcast. I've turned on so many friends to it during the quarantine. Thanks for da doing daily episodes. I've had a friends with benefits relationship with this guy since the beginning of this year. We met off a dating app and had a really fun first date where we ended up having sex. Since then, it, estab it, since then it established this no commitment relationship. It's been really nice to have a consistent lay, especially during the quarantine, and we genuinely have a good, genuinely have a good time together. I feel like we have such a good connection and can talk about anything. Honestly, just hanging out with him is super fun, and the sex is just a bonus at this point. Since that first and only date, we've only ever hit each other up at night, usually after one of us has been out drinking, out or drinking already. When we were drinking together one night, we talked about how once things are back to normal, it'll be fun to go actually go on and out, out on another date again. I didn't really take this seriously since we were drinking, and I already have written this guy off in my head as someone who I don't expect relationship behavior from. But the other day, he brought it up again, how he thinks it would be super fun to go out on a day together. After he said that, it left me thinking that he is actually someone I'd want to date. And maybe he's thinking the same thing, and no one wants to really bring it up. I like this guy a lot. I think trying to date would be really fun, but I don't know how to go about bringing it up since we've had this casual relationship for so long. Is it possible to turn friends with benefits into a boyfriend, and how would you bring up that conversation? Thoughts and advice would be greatly appreciated. Now, Gordon, what do you think? <laughs> I think they're already in some form of a relationship because friends with benefits, maybe in my case, uh, mm. friends with benefits, we don't really talk that much. We just sure. agree to meet up. Uh, my first thing I would say is like, try sober sex first. And if that okay. works, <laughs> <laughs> if it you seems guys like they're just doing it when they're drunk. So I'm like, try sober sex first. And if you sure. guys like it and then hop into the relationship, because that's well, going to be real bad. I think what you said in the beginning is very interesting. The way you see friends with benefits is different than the way she says friends with benefits, which yeah. that is like the beginning of the problem with a lot of relationships. This, this singular term that is translated differently to two different people, especially, yep. you know, men and women. So like, yeah. it's going to be different to men and women. It's going to be different to two women that have grown up together their whole lives and are best two best friends could have different definitions of friends with benefits. I say it this all the time with the word casual. Yeah. People go, yeah, I'm casually have I'm casual with this guy. And then you go and they go, but he won't call me. I'm like, well that's not his version of casual. Not at all. <laughs> so I think this like definition thing of like and and you know the the idea of like what friends with benefits is I think get away from terms. I think we have to get away from terms because that's just confusing. When she she's put it in a bucket of we're friends with benefits. I've never seen him anything. I think you have to live in in do you says the title of the email, does my friends with benefits want more? I think that's the wrong question. Definitely right? a wrong question. Yeah. Cuz it, it seems it like she be, wants more also. That's the thing. I why this the title should the this email is I like this guy. Bang. Right? So simple, so direct. But like, like she's saving herself from being rejected. You could tell by yeah. that from the title. Like yeah. if she was just like, hey, I like this guy. We're just uh bang buddies or uh friends with benefits and I wanna get more exclusive with him, I think that would actually put her like let her know, hey, I'm really into this guy. But it's still yeah. saving herself some uh, pain in case there's a rejection. 
Yeah, I, 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 I totally agree. It is protection. It, it's protectionary. It's, it's, I, I, I'm uh, in line with you 100%. And I think if everyone started every question about the person they're seeing with, am I having fun? Do I feel fulfilled? If it's yes and yes, we're already off to a good start. Now let's make some decisions. True. So it's like I so you ha- I think what she the, the problem is and in this fear of rejection, she has it she likes what she has now. Mm-hmm. And that's a problem because that will the, you will stop liking this. Like she's like we have great sex and we we have great talks and she, she, the way she described it, it sounds like a happy situation. The problem is when you decide that you like someone oh, yeah. and then you stay in the situation that doesn't match your feelings, then you're going to resent it. So oh, yeah. while this feels good right now, she's like, this feels great. I got the friend. I got the fuck. I got, we can talk. She, at some point, she has to make a change. To see if he to 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 maybe fuck this whole thing up, which is yeah, and and, and that sucks. Like that's so that, scary too. I'm it's scared scary. for her now. Right? I'm scared for her now. Like I don't know what to do now. Like before, I was like, yeah, man, just uh, try to give him more benefits. Which like the way she even worded it, does my friends with benefits want more? Like what more is there? Like what is more to offer? They're having sex. They're laughing. They're having a good time. Sure. They talk, and I'm just like, that seems like a good relationship already. What more is going to be added to well, it? Well, the, the more that she's looking for is responsibility and commitment. Okay. The more, the more I would say the more when you're going from, because this is like, if there was a married couple that was yeah. like, yeah, we, if, if marriage was described this way, yeah, we joke around and we fuck. It's great. <laughs> Everyone would want to get married. <laughs> you know? I get married right now. <laughs> right? Well, but that's not a relationship. A relationship no. becomes when you can call this person and kind of share your problems, your needs, your you, you can you can call on them to that to make them take a part of their day out for you. Oh yeah. Yeah, I you remember know, those. So, Right? I love that type of relationship because I I haven't had a relationship in a, quite some time, but like I How long I enjoyed. Been? Oh, it's been about uh, I want to say about two years. Mm-hmm. Two years, and uh, like I remember exclusively giving up an hour of my day just to listen to her talk about someone she hated her job, and I was like, "This is a relationship." <laughs> That's a rela- yes. You to have listen to, her to do that. Yeah. And yes, like I got a text today that was my girlfriend. She's in Atlanta. Yeah. And I got a text today and she was like, I'm hungry. And it's like, I don't know, like what that's having a relationship is like, what do I? And I wrote to her. I was like, then eat up, bitch. And she's like that. And then she writes back like the emoji with like the unhappy face. And it's like, so like to this person that's writing in. Yeah, I'm not saying it has to be today. Yeah. I'm not saying it has to be tomorrow. But when you have to make the decision to maybe lose what you have, the fun of it, to gain something new. That's and true. and what she has to do is say to the guy, "My feelings have changed." Like this whole idea of like we should do a date. We should do a date. Hey, I'm actually liking you. And I kind of want to take this from late night hookup to something else. And whatever you want to do with that information is up to you. And then she has to start saying no to some of the late night hookups and being unoffended by that and going, Mm -hmm. I'm not up for the late night hookup. I am up for that date. That's the conversation. Ooh, I like that. Right? Because instead of you going, what are we? What are we going to change here? It's like, there's not a lot to change. The only thing to change is a little bit of responsibility for me and my feelings. Sure. Call me before you get drunk. <laughs> That's right. And 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 take me to a little dinner. J Train yeah. Podcast at gmail.com. J Train Podcast at gmail.com here with Gordon Baker Bone at 
Baker Bone. Go follow right now. The album, Nobody Just Me. Go, go, go. Listen, Gordon's hilarious. You're going to love it. How to handle sexual anxiety and not screw things up with a new guy. These are getting mm. serious. This is I like this. This is spicy. Come on. This is spicy. <laughs> Jared, love the podcast. I've told all my single girlfriends to listen and take your advice. So I met this guy on Hinge a few weeks ago. We've done the whole FaceTime and socially distanced date thing. On our third and fourth dates, we had an amazing makeout session. After first saying neither of us uh, is being physical with anyone else right now during COVID. I told him I want to take things slow, and he was very respectful towards that. Here's the issue. I'm fairly sexually inexperienced, and I'm getting way too in my head about this. I waited until I was in my early 20s to have sex for the first time. I'm 25 now, and since then, I've only been with a couple people in short-lived situations. In the past, sex has been physically painful because I haven't been super into the guys and and have felt anxiety. I'm almost never optimistic about a guy, but the man I'm currently seeing seems great for me so far, and I'm super into him. I know at some point we're going to have sex, and I want to, but I don't know if waiting too long will make things weird or add more pressure. I'm also nervous that with him being 31, he's not going to understand me being self-conscious about my minimal experience, and I'm guessing I shouldn't really discuss it. This, on top of the anxiety about seeing me naked, isn't great. Any advice on how to approach this? Do guys care if the person they're dating isn't exactly a sex expert? As long as we're uh, open to feedback, I see potential with him, and I don't want to self-sabotage. Thank you. Almost naked and afraid, they sign off. So what do you, uh, Gordon, what do you think? Uh, first, I like the, the the name at the end. Uh, it's a good name. But, yeah, it's a great name. Uh, personally, uh, you shouldn't be with anybody that you feel uncomfortable talking about your experience. I believe that uh, being inexperienced is not something that you should be ashamed of. It's something that you can wear with pride. You're you're willing to explore, and you you seem like you're ready to. So you, the first things first, talk about it. Don't be embarrassed yeah. about it. It's like I, get it out there. I'm a hundred percent with you, and I I think it's great that we're reading this email with two straight men on. You know, two straight men. Yeah. Both of us, because the first thing you said is exactly what I thought. She wrote this line. Um, I'm also nervous that with him being 31, he's not going to understand me being self-conscious about my minimal experience, and I'm guessing I shouldn't really discuss it. You and I both disagree with that line. Yep. You Absolutely. definitely should discuss it. At, and if- that I, the first thing she should do, That's and, and what that does is then you become a sex team. There you go. When you, when, when you talk it out, when you put it on the table, it go. It, it's kind of like you two emptying your pockets and going, okay, I got, we got, and now you're putting your all your stuff together. Okay, we yep. got $20, we got keys, <laughs> we got a dildo, we got, and, and, you know, like, it, it, it is a form of that because. Yes. And, and it's, and, and if you say that to him, then, listen, Also, as far as like the quote unquote scaring him away, if your sexual experience makes him back away, then he wasn't the right guy for you to be having sex with in the first place. Not at all. This uh, that is bullet dodged. That is the that. Thank goodness you were you were honest with him because having sex won't keep him there. Yeah. So so. You, I, I think the like the idea of like you see potential with them. No, 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 no. Stop seeing potential with people, because there's a lot of people that were married ten years that <laughs> saw potential that got divorced ten years in. Yep. So potential's bullshit. Are you having fun? Are you feeling fulfilled? Yes and yes. Hey, I want to talk to you about something because I'm super attracted to you, and I really want to take the next step with you. But let me tell you about my experience and where I'm at with sex. And then, and I, right? I honestly, I honestly, yeah, I think that is great. And I think that the more you talk about it and the more you be open about it is actually the sexier part. For yes. like most guys, the more that you put out what you are into or what you're not into, what you're willing to try, what you're not willing to try, it is opens that whole conversation and it makes it fun and playful to talk about something that might give you some anxiety. It might help you guys explore something and learn something new. I, I couldn't agree with you more. I love everything you just said. And 
to even add to that, now you guys like now it's there's no secrets. Now you're going to be if you're comfortable releasing this, he'll be comfortable saying the things that he likes. Guys are fixers. We are video game players. We yes, want to win the level. So when you give us all the magic tokens that get us to the end of the level, we go great. Well, I'm going to get you where you need to go to feel comfortable and loved and sexy and good. And then I'll feel good for making you feel good. Oh, man, it's nothing better. Like, I know every dude I've ever talked to. The one thing that makes most men that I know feel the most fulfilled is knowing that they can physically and emotionally satisfy the girl that they're into. Absolutely. I, and I, I, I'm happy we're talking about this email because I think – I hope she takes this advice because, like, I, I mean this, I, and I know you do. Like, yeah. this is it, is, it is interesting how, how much we agree on this because, and, and how wrong she was with her assumptions. And, and I'm not yeah. saying that to down her. I'm just yeah. saying, take this advice, you know, like, and, and also, it, again, let me reiterate if he doesn't want to hear this, he wasn't going to be great, anyways. He wasn't for you. We are sponsored, people. This episode of the J Train Podcast is brought to you by Roman. For guys, the last thing we want to talk about is our dick not working right. That's why we say things like, I lost my mojo. Or when times get really tough, we just say, sorry, honey, I had a rough day at the office. Ha ha ha, yeah, right. Well, if your man can't talk to you about it, send his ass to Roman at GetRoman.com. He can talk to a real doctor who can prescribe real meds all from the comfort uh, of home. Wow, that's great. So from home, you can talk to a real doctor who can prescribe real meds to help you with the issues downstairs. I think that is a very powerful thing. Anyone that's going through something like that, you're not sure what to do, you have questions, GetRoman.com is a great resource. With Roman, you can get a free online evaluation and ongoing care for ED without leaving the house. The doctor will work. Wor- the doctor will wor- 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 That's a hard sentence to say. The doctor will work with you. Try saying the doctor will wor- wor- The doctor will work with you to find the best treatment plan. If medication is appropriate, Roman will ship it to you with free two-day shipping. People, this is great. The whole process is straightforward, simple, and discreet. Getting started is simple. Just go to GetRoman.com slash JTrain and complete an online visit. Erectile dysfunction used to be tough to tackle, but now there's Roman. Complete an online visit today to connect with a doctor and take care of it. I got to say, I love this because so many of the things we know we need to do we put aside because of the annoying things in the way to get to do them. So what do I mean? Oh, I got to make a doctor's appointment. What doctor do I go to? Do I want to go? You know, I have so much to do this week. I got to go. You know, I don't have the time. I don't want to. Uh, all that stuff goes to the side when you're like, hey, you can just go online and, and chit chat with someone. It breaks down the barriers. It kind of makes it less scary. And that's why I love what Get Roman does. So go go to GetRoman.com slash JTrain today. If approved, you'll get $15 off your first order of ED treatment. That's GetRoman.com slash JTrain. GetRoman.com slash JTrain. JTrain podcast at gmail.com. JTrain podcast at gmail.com. Here with Gordon Baker Bone. At Baker Bone. Uh, on Instagram and Twitter. Go, 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 go check out the album. You're going to love it. Let's do another one. Okay. Okay. How about... Let's do... I'm trying to find... Okay. I like this one because it's very organized. Ready? Okay. Chronically single, have I been unlucky or am I doing something wrong? It's funny that like this comes from a woman. You tell yeah. me you've been single for two and a half years. Are you looking to get in a relationship? Do you? Yes, do you, I'm actually I'm actually looking to get into a relationship. Like I want to be back uh, in a relationship full time. Like I've I've had some off and on situations where I've dated somebody and we broke up, or 
uh, I revisited old relationships like mm. way from way back and tried to see uh, if that would work again. But like, I actually kind of like the the being single part because it helped me focus on growing as a person. Because now I feel like that I'm older now at 35. Like I know what I'm into and I know what I want in a partner now. So sure. now I'm like, all right, let's get it. So yeah. I'm going mean, to keep that, working on me like, and find somebody. It's, it's funny. That's like the more positive way to write that email where you're like, I'm looking yeah. for, you know, now I know what I want. And, and like hers is written. The title is, am I unlucky? It's like, no, no, no. <laughs> Hi, Jared. Thanks for being my straight man whisper during these quarantine times or writing you because Jared, I'm so tired. I'm 28 years old, have been on the dating app since 2014, giving it my best shot. My question. Am I going after guys that are out of my league, setting myself up for heartbreak over and over again? Is there something I should be doing differently or does it sound like I have just been unlucky? Some context. I've had one relationship when I was 24 and it was with a guy who wouldn't acknowledge that what it was, who was grossed out going down on me, who ended it at the 10 month point by ghosting me and then eventually sending me an email. I've had, I, I have been head over heels for male friends who are, I confess my who after I confess my interest in them, have, they have told me they only see me platonically. I've had a lot of gray area sexual experience that felt exploitative. I've given blowjobs I've never wanted to give, which I know is common. Sex is a little complicated for me. In recent years, I've honed in on my standards. I look for strong, authentic connections with men I'm dating. I want the time I spend with someone to be easygoing, and I want us to laugh. It's pretty rare I find someone that fits that. I think I'm a catch in a non-obvious way. I'm passionate about my career. I have my life together. I'm funny, smart, and thoughtful. This is my current sitch. In the last six months, I've dated two men, one in January uh, and one just now. Note, it's rare for me to have mutual interest in a second date with someone, so this has been pretty intense six months dating-wise. So she's got two guys. In both okay. scenarios, we dated for five weeks. I was more into them than they were into me, apart from the one, uh, the one relationship I mentioned earlier. Those two experiences with these two men were the second and third most serious dating experiences I've ever had. Four-ish dates each. I was so excited about them. Slept together on date two. The sex was great because it felt like they cared about my pleasure, which is something I'm not used to. So I got attached. I think they enjoyed sleeping with me too, but I don't imagine that I stood out in the same way for they, uh, same way that they did for me. After five weeks, they dumped me. Their reasoning was I was just someone they could could. I, wasn't, I just wasn't someone they could see themselves getting more serious with. For my end, I'll repeat, these were some of the most significant dating experiences of my life. They likely didn't know that, though, as I've spent years figuring out how to be as chill as possible, how to go uh, put on my go-with-the-flow mask. I can't seem to understand why I'm chronically single besides I go after men that could be could get a lot of women and those men are down to fuck a girl like me a few times but not date seriously. I'm an easy way for them to get their dick wet but when it's clear it means something to me it's time to move on because I'm not worth the energy to get to know further. Let me stop reading this. That's a very... I, yeah. I understand everything she's saying. It's a very honest way to write it. Um... I under like I it's also like it's I I don't mean this in a bad negative way it's sad to hear because I don't believe this to be true it could be spun and it could be looked at from a different angle and be more positive don't you think yeah yeah dude you gotta stop first for me personally listen to your letter yo you gotta pat yourself on the back because like listen you clearly are a catch these dudes would be messing around with you if you weren't a catch uh, stop putting yourself down. That's first and foremost. And stop well, she, dating dudes, these DJ Khaled's that's not eating you out. You better find yeah. dudes that's willing to <laughs> please you, all right? I agree. <laughs> well, she writes this, I wish I was. I were more optimistic. Yeah, it seems pessimistic. I, that's yeah, the it's best. very she pessimistic. used the right word. But after a decade of straight men treating me like I'm disposable, I'm not sure how to create confidence from nothing. So I'm turning to you since you're the straight man with the largest presence in my life right now. Uh, here are screenshots of my Tinder, images of the two men I day this year, as well as the ex I, uh, that I mentioned. Is it ridiculous that I thought these guys would be interested in me? I'm not sure where to go from here. I'm at a point where I'm wondering if a healthy relationship was just something not meant for me and if I should turn my attention to other parts of my life. Note, if you decide not to feature on... J train 
Uh, no, we're going to feature it. Um, yeah. I'm going to forward this, Gordon, to you. Okay. Okay? Because I, I don't... She, I mean, so at least she'll have two men look at her picture. Because I don't believe... I haven't even looked at the pictures and... Yeah. I, I none of this is true. I don't care okay. what someone looks like. Everyone is someone's foot. And I yeah. say this I use this <laughs> this thing. If you go on porn sites, there's dudes masturbating to feet. So yeah. <laughs> So for e there's a butt for every seat, every look someone's into. So for me to say that like one, you know, in, in, and I know people do these rating things where, you know, guys talk in a certain way, but the reality is there's no such thing as like out of your league. And so let's look at her pictures. She's very cute. She's a great looking girl. And, oh, yeah. And the guys are not in any way. Do I look at them? If I saw them walking down the street, would I be like, what? What? That's yeah, seriously. Not, right? <laughs> There's no way. I'm not going to look at that guy like, oh, he gets all the ladies. Nah, relax, bro. <laughs> yeah. And also, I wouldn't look at them as not being some sort of match or, right? They look like yeah. they. She looks like she, and she's very pretty. Extremely. Like, I, all right. I, it's a lot right here for There's me a lot. personally. So, yeah. so what do you, so I guess Listen. the question is, um, what should she do? I I think that she should not give up. She should honestly focus more. Like, don't worry about trying to find somebody. Find people that, that you personally are into. If you're into that person and you want to be around that person, go at it. My only gripe with that is don't let these dudes not please you because yeah. you're in a relationship also. You're getting something out of this also. It's not a one-way thing. And, uh, yeah, if you don't want to give somebody a blowjob, please don't. It's nothing. Yeah, don't. It's nothing worse than a a, a, a lackluster blowjob in general. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> An unenthusiastic blowjob. Yeah. yeah. No, no one should. Do, no one should do it. No one should want it. it. Is bad for both sides, in my opinion. And uh, I personally think that you're a looker. Keep hanging out there. Maybe switch up the apps if you want to keep doing apps. I like Hinge. Like. Nice little place for poetry. You can get out there a little bit better than Tinder for me personally. But uh, I think you should just reassess you for a little bit because you're not bad. Based on her profile, she lives in a, in a very great place to get to know young professionals. I would okay. say that. So I would say, and she's very cute. I agree with everything you said, and I agree with the positivity with which you said it, that yeah. I think she could – take that she wrote a couple things in her email that i will first of all she writes about the out she needs to stop thinking about people being out of her league seriously she needs to stop and i know or someone having a, she writes that these guys uh you know have access to a lot of women and i think that is not going to do her any good. That's a pathway to mental destruction that you don't really need. That's head trash. Oh, There's yeah. no such thing. You, She's holding every, herself back with that. Yeah, you're holding exactly. And it's and it's negative thoughts that are just that you're hurting yourself with. And she writes something very specific um I wish I could find it right away. Yeah. Um, she wrote. Hold on. Okay. Because um, there was a lot in there that like. It, I know, but triggered. there was one. It triggered me. It did it because you're like, it is pessimistic. And yeah. she wrote something about being the chill girl. Do you remember that? Yeah, I remember like she said it with such a. And forgive me, uh, a negative way. I love mm -hmm. a good chill girl. Like I love but, someone that I could kick back and just relax with. But she also anyway. wrote it as like she was like putting on a chill mask. Like yeah. like I, I I think in recent years I've honed on my standard. I look for strong connections. I spend the time with easygoing. 
Okay. It's pretty rare that I find that I'm a catch. I'm passionate about my career. Um, I was so excited. Slept together. I can't seem to understand why I'm chronically single. I go after men that are a lot could get a lot of women. No, no, they can't. And those men are down <laughs> to fuck a girl like me a few times. We cannot say uh, dick wet. And I wish I was more optimistic. But after, I'm sorry that I'm taking a minute. I don't know, because like even you going back through it, it's like certain things I'm picking up on that like I didn't even get to focus on. Chronically single, that's another triggering thing. So it's nothing wrong with being single. It's not no, a sickness you're to be looking, single. These experiences that she had with these guys, and I know she had a very like specific two guys at the same time and found connections with both. Yeah. You could take positive from those experiences. You can go, here are the things I liked about them. Now yeah. you know what you liked. When we do a stand-up show, I talked about this on the last episode I taped, but okay. when we do a stand-up show, there are bad shows. Oh, but yeah. what but what we I I think I I I won't speak for you, but I know for myself, I could have the worst show in the world, but get one new sentence <laughs> and it's and it's worth it. It's a great show. You know what I mean? I oh, yeah. bombed so hard, but one sentence, oh, my God, that's going to be a part of the, the new hour. Oh, yeah. I got – if you get a minute out of a 20-minute bomb, how happy are you? Oh, I'm ecstatic. And, like, because, to, to, to relate that to, like, everyday dating life, uh, I love going on bad dates at great restaurants. I've been to some <laughs> horrific <laughs> dates but I've got like I'm like I'm never gonna see this person again. This was terrible. But I at least got this restaurant out of it. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing, and it's like you could relate that to restaurants. You could relate yep. it to I like the I like hugging. You know, like this yeah. guy <laughs> taught me that hugging felt good, and it's like I can't believe I'm still looking for this part of the email. Yeah, because um, it was a lot in there. I, I know why you're looking too, because it was a lot in there, and like. She's, she seems and looks she like writes, an amazing okay. person. Here's what it is. From my end, I'll repeat. These were some of the most significant dating experiences of my life. So she's saying the two guys plus the guy when she was 24. Yeah. They likely didn't know that, though. As I've spent years figuring out how to be as chill as possible, how to put on my go-with-the-flow mask, I would tell her, take off the fucking mask. Seriously. It's time stop. What I think her biggest problem is that she's trying to make herself into someone that someone will like. That's not going to be a long-term person. When you say that I put on a mask to go with the flow, being difficult is being yourself and fi- and and being honest. Listen. My girlfriend and I we have negotiations every day on everything in our relationship. But we're both at the table negotiating. Someone might get up from that table. She might say, fuck this, I'm out of here. But that's when you know it's over. So, But at least I was my most honest self throughout the whole relationship. When you're saying this to me, when you write a negative email and you say to me, I'm chronically single, but I got this mask on, I'd be like, well, you haven't really met anybody. Exactly. So so I would say to her, she needs to get off the dating apps. I think maybe I think that can become too that much. That's too much of one road where it's the same thing every time. I love what Gordon said in the beginning. You said something about going and being around people that that, that- sh- that gravitate to you naturally and want to please you and wants to be around you because I feel so, like you you yeah. haven't experienced that uh, enough so that you can grow and like uh, to reiterate what you were saying yo take that mask off next time you go yeah. meet somebody next time you go on a date play uh, futures mask off and listen to that back to back before you start talking <laughs> to people take well, that mask that, off the, the exactly and to t- the best way to take your mask off is to hang out with your friends and family that you are the most you around. So yeah. go have fun with those people where you're the most you, where you do the things that you guys like to do, and now you're going to be in areas that are around other people who have the same interests as you, like the same things as you. You're in, a, you're in an environment that is all about 
what you enjoy, and and you're gonna and and now you have that in common. So I think yep. when you go on the apps, it becomes this wide swath of everyone who's single. Well, what about single people who like to go to concerts? What about single people that like to go to a, a nice wine bar? Now you know when you do things that are more you. When you do like when you like I say now I'm like I'm like 35. I don't like I'll only go to a bar that has chairs. Okay, <laughs> that if I was single, I would go to bars with chairs to meet girls who like bars with chairs. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, and I know I'm making this simple, but sometimes it's about making it simple, and then things get difficult. Life is difficult, but I, is. I this whole mask conversation that is someone that is trying to fit square pegs into round holes, and that's just never going to work. You're always going to find, and and so of course you're going to find people that are like. Ah, uh, you know, we don't really connect because they're not connecting with the the real person. That is so a hundred percent correct. Uh, I love the suggestion of going to hang out with in your natural environments because that is going to not only attract people that you might own me more into because you have nothing up, nothing to hide. You're so comfortable, and they get to see that side of you and instantly attracted to that side of you. Yes. We are sponsored, people. The J Train Podcast is brought to you by Nutrafol. Nutrafol, ladies, I know you don't think it will happen to you, but some of you ladies are losing hair and you don't even know it. 30 million women experience weakened or thinning hair, but thousands of women have taken back control of their hair with Nutrafol. With many users raving that the supplement not only transformed their hair, but restored their confidence too. Nutrafol offers two targeted formulas for women that are clinically shown to improve hair growth and thickness with less shedding through all stages of life. Healthier hair growth takes time. You'll begin to experience thicker, stronger, faster growing hair in three to six months. I, I got to say, I, I love what Nutrafol's doing because this is one of those things that it can be embarrassing. You're not sure what to do. I like that Nutrafol offers a, res- a resource for you to look into it and see what they got because if you're dealing with hair loss and you're not sure what to do, it might be tough to talk to someone. It might be tough to, you know, to seek out who to, what do, you know, what are there medications for this? Are there ways to help this? Nutrafol is a great resource. Nutrafol is physician formulated to be 100% drug free. They use natural, clinically effective botanicals for better hair growth and whole body health. Nutrafol supports healthy hair growth by, from within by targeting five root causes of thinning, stress, hormones, environment, nutrition, and metabolism. It's easy. Visit Nutrafol.com and take their hair wellness quiz for customized product recommendations. That's great. When you subscribe, you'll receive monthly deliveries so you never miss a dose. Does it work? Yes. In a clinical study, 86% of women reported improved hair growth after six months, and more than 1,500 top doctors recommend Nutrafol as an effective and high-quality solution for healthier hair. You can grow thicker, healthier hair and support our show by going to Nutrafol.com and using promo code JTRAIN. That's JTRAIN. And new customers will get 20, 20, 20% off. This is their best offer available anywhere, plus free shipping on every order. Get 20% off Nutrafol.com, spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com, promo code JTRAIN. Stand up for your strands and get Nutrafol. J train podcast at gmail.com. J train podcast at gmail.com here with Gordon Baker Bone. Go follow right now at Baker Bone on Instagram, on Twitter. Go, go, go to the album. Nobody just me. Go, go, go right now. Anywhere you listen to music, is dating to friendsing a real thing or is he being a weirdo? <laughs> Oh. Recent J Train podcast junkie here literally spent all last week shooting up your podcast like Novocaine between bouts of deep crying. It was truly enlightening. Wish I heard your advice sooner, to be honest. Wow. I'm a 35 female, pick attached, recently sort of dumped or friend zoned by a 30 year old guy I met in, uh, met in March on Hinge. We hung out several times a week. It's a real. Uh, it's of real dates he planned, dinner, golf, picnics, etc. 
and mind-blowing sex. He said it was the best ever uh, a lot. Before we met, he planned to leave the state for work, but that was put on hold for quarantine. He went home for two weeks in June. Contact response time dwindled drastically. He was distant when he returned, so I called him out. He said he uh, would be moving for work soon. Date still TBD. He didn't want to commit and felt guilty, but he still wants to be friends without romantic pressure. Normally, I'd say nah. But I really like him as a person, and he's been my main outlet during the pandemic. We truly connect on values, interests, personality, have lots of deep talks about everything. I feel like we know everything about each other. We spent all last weekend doing things together uh, like when we were dating but without the sex, kissing, touching part. He's more responsive, helpful, and wants to spend every even more time together now that we're friends. He was a little inconsistent when we dated. There's been zero transition time between romantic duo to friends, by the way. It annoys me he's possibly dating others, and I'm literally right there. Uh, An all-around bad bitch, especially since our sex life was so amazing. What a waste, and we get along so great. He told me he never stays friends with exes, so he's trying something new. Yeah, same. So, Jared, what gives? Is he a serial killer? Is he just friend-zoning me? Is he trying some secret ninja move I don't know yet? Help. So what do you think? She sent a picture. She's very cute. Um, I don't know what the picture has to do with anything, but I, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> what do you think, Gordon? Uh, wow. I've never heard of a situation like this. This, yeah. I, I get why you're uh, apprehensive and you think it's a ninja move because, yeah, like most times when you get with somebody and y'all like break up afterwards, the friendship doesn't work. Doesn't mm. work at all. Or it's a long time before you become friends again. Like I, I traditionally, I am not friends with most of my exes. It takes a very, very, very yeah. long time before we can get from the fun, sexy side to the fun friendship side again afterwards. So if you guys are still hanging out and like, again, it was during the pandemic, it was a lot of bonding over the pandemic. Uh, you might've been the only person that he was talking to through that whole thing so a bond might have grown through that um i appreciate that you're taking him at face value because <laughs> that's that is an option maybe a bond yeah. grew here's the problem and i i'm not disagreeing with you because that is an op that is a that could be what's going on i yeah the problem is if you're gonna be friends with an ex both people have to be on board with being friends she she is not on board. She's still sitting here going, we have it all, and now we're not having sex? Like, <laughs> she needs to leave this. This isn't a fr- – and I do think there is a ninja move here. Okay. The ninja move is that it got serious. It got more serious than this guy wanted to be, and Ooh. he tried to hit the reset button. And he's trying to hit the reset button so that he still has access to you for when he makes a decision. He knows that you're more emotionally involved in this than he is, and he knows he has access to you whenever he wants it. But now that he's said the friend thing, he can go back to just hooking up that maybe wasn't available to him if he kept going on the track that you were on. Yeah, he really did just slow it down drastically so he can figure his own self out. Yeah. You don't know whether it, oh, oh. Jared, so now, like he, wow. yeah, he can now date a bunch of people, hang out with you, and then if he, you know, it's basically like to me, he put you in the fridge as leftovers. Like he's holding, he's keeping you cold for when he wants you to eat you up. Right? Like, yeah, this feels really manipulative. Did. It does feel very manipulative because the the time, the timing afterwards, and how much he's spending time with her. Uh, after making a distance between the relationship, mm-hmm. after saying we're got we're not going to have sex, but I'm still going to be around you this much. Uh, yeah, the, the sheets are still warm. Yeah, how could he say now we'll just be friends? He's I I think what will happen is and and again this gets very romanticized. This yeah. is almost like what he's doing. He's playing off of like the TV version of this relationship is like them being on a couch together and it's late and they have a couple too many drinks and then they kiss and she's like, should we? I thought we were going to be friends. And he's going to go, ah, I know, it's so hard. And now they get to, and when they get back to, when that happens, 
Now they're back to casual sex. And he gets like a whole new refresh of like a three month pass of being not in a relationship with you, being casual sex, sexual partner with you. So I think this is, I think for her, she needs to step away. I don't think this will. And I, if that isn't the case, she isn't over the relationship. So staying in this is going to make her resent it. It's very much so. Like I, I had an ex one time ask me, why couldn't we be friends after our relationship? And I was like, I'm too involved into it. I had to be quite honest. Like, I can't be around you. Because if I'm yeah. around you, I'm, a const- I'm constantly going to want you and try and make attempts to be with you. So if you really want this friendship, you got to let me go away for a little bit. And when I'm ready yeah. to come back to be your friend, that's when it's okay. And that's, and that's when you see, oh, do I even want this person as a friend? Exactly. Like, like like the whole idea of friendship is like it's pretty great until you're like wait a minute i don't even want to fucking make time for you i make time for my real friends yeah i got tons of friends and now i'm, yeah, I'm I, adding you to the circle j train podcast at gmail.com j train podcast at gmail.com gordon let's do one more this has been fantastic okay. thank you oh, is man, that i'm cool? having fun with it yes yeah, cool this is great let's do one more i think that we'll be able to have need clarification on my boyfriend's explore page. Hmm. Instagram explore page. I, this can this could be a problematic email. Yeah. J Train. <laughs> I've rated, reviewed, subscribed, signed up for Patreon, told all my friends about the podcast and you up podcast. I even took some friends to your San Diego shows earlier this year. That's so great. Thank you. I'm emailing you in regards to my boyfriend's explore page on his Instagram account. The other night, I looked over his shoulder and saw that his Explore page is all women. Not like Instagram models in bikini, but a lot of average-looking pretty girls. After noticing this Explore page was flooded with women, I checked who he follows. And then he's not following a lot of women. It's just his friends or meme accounts. What could this mean? Is he looking at a lot of girls' accounts? Is he DMing them? For context, I'm 27 and he's 31. We've been together for four and a half years. He occasionally travels for work. In the past, I noticed he would get a new girl. In the in the past, I would notice that he'd get new girl followers from that area. He doesn't ever follow them. When I brought it up in the past, he would just tell me that I'm insecure and I'm looking way too into it. Is his explore page something I should be concerned about? Do most men's explore page look like this? Wow. This is a tough uh, one. This is a tough one. Because um, my explore page. What's my yours? Explore page, mine's is uh, barbecue, uh, French bulldogs, <laughs> and uh, gold grills. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. So No um, chicks. No, it's very few chicks. Like, so her concern about the explore page is warranted. His dismissal of it would only heighten. That warranted. Uh. <laughs> yeah. In the beginning, anyway. so when I first read the the first paragraph, when she says, not like Instagram models and bikinis, but like average looking pretty girls, I, I could understand that if he's going down the rabbit hole of looking at someone's friend and then you look at another friend and, and, and just looking is within us all. Like that I'm willing to be okay with. The big problem comes when he travels for work and in the past he would get new girl followers from that area. Mm. So the only way for that, that doesn't just happen. You know, the only way for that to happen is if you're speaking to these girls and they're following you because maybe there was some sort of flirtatious conversation. It, for it to happen once, fine, it happens once. But for it to happen many times or a number of times, we got we're putting together a case here. Yeah, it's not looking good for him <laughs> or her. I, I no. <laughs> and I feel for her because they've been together four and a half years, and yeah. that's a long time. But I would say if you're looking over the shoulder to see the. There's a lack of trust here, whether Seriously. it's about Instagram or not. But if you're looking at the Explore page and then going and then also searching for his followers to see who the new ones are, okay, that happens after not trusting someone. Yeah, exactly. Like the feeling is there. 
uh, I'm not going to say whether the feeling is right, but you have this feeling for a reason. Yes. And maybe let's explore why you have these feelings. Uh, mm-hmm. And I don't, honestly, I I don't follow a lot of people on Instagram. So to hear someone's uh, Instagram Explorer page is filled with uh, quote unquote average looking women. That sounds suspect as hell. And I don't want to yeah. cause any problems. But hey, uh, I know what mine looks like. Hey, if you feel like you should question them about it, I say do whatever feels natural and right on your uh, behalf. Yeah, th- this is a tough one because, yeah, I, I, she said, should I be concerned? I think we both agree there should be some c- level of concern. Yes. The I don't think the concern over what is on your Explore page isn't as much, but you would say that maybe that's like the symptom. You know, like that's like yeah. a sniffly nose you know, when you have a, a stuffy That's nose, it. mean you have a cold. So like exactly. So I guess that is an issue because my explore page does have models. Mine yeah. does have butt models. Mine does have you know, you know, curvy you know models too. So yeah. like I'm in that world. I, I'm not gonna like say that I'm above this, but I. Yeah. But mine aren't. Like these are people. Mine are a lot of like aspiring and like people who have a following. Like exactly. I wouldn't say it's like. A gr- mine isn't like women with 200 followers so yeah, that's a big part of it too i think that's the reason why she put average in there is because mm-hmm. i i know this from experience when people see attractive women with a low number of following uh they it it rises attention I'm like all right this person is pretty and somebody mm-hmm. might feel like they found like a gym out there so they might feel like they could be with this person this very attractive person without anyone catching wind of it first so yeah i get the suspicion from that yeah, and, the suspi- and, and and when you see new followers you know fr- that are representative of these girls that means he's very likely talking to women in a way that would make you mad if he was doing it in front of you so yeah. that much being said like and also if he was a comedian and he got new female followers from every city he went to i would go that's a different story Totally different story. <laughs> because they like the show, they want to see what else he does, they follow. That's a that's a straight line to a follow. Him going yes. for work to be an accountant, I don't know how that <laughs> happens where someone finds his account. Yeah, you should like if he's gonna go do taxes, I don't know why he exchanged Instagrams. So Yeah, and I so I think she has to be concerned and I think she's gotta start talking with him and i think when he comes back to you and says well that's your insecure no 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 i i I, I, i'm just noticing things and i'm noticing things that are making me feel like you are speaking to other women in ways that would that you wouldn't do in front of me and yeah you gotta have that conversation got to J Train Podcast at gmail.com. J Train Podcast at gmail.com. Gordon Bakerbone, thank you so much. Oh, dude, this has been amazing, man. And like I say this to you all the time. I love your work, man. Uh, and I love you. hanging with you. This has been dope, man. Dude, it's always a blast. It's always good to see you. I I I, I love your comedy. I, and I think anyone who listens will love it too. Go follow Gordon at Bakerbone right now. The album, Nobody Just Me. Go listen immediately. Such a pleasure. Thank you for doing this. I'm Jared Freed. We're here Mondays and Thursdays. Go join the Patreon, patreon.com slash Jared Freed. We'll be back next episode. Boom.